Hello again. I realised when I started thinking about doing a book a month that it was going to take me a very long time to get through all my favourite books. So I thought maybe I might do the occasional single book, but there's also the idea of looking at themes. So uh, it's New Year. So this month's theme is forest gardening. And it's uh, you could think of forest gardening as being something that's more to do with the summer, because of course it's uh, when you might be harvesting from the garden through the spring, the summer and the autumn. But the winter is when we do planning and also when we might be planting a lot of things in the forest garden. So perhaps you've heard of forest gardens or uh, perhaps you already have one. Um, but if you start looking at the books on forest gardening, those that have the words forest gardens in the title, there's quite a lot of them. And uh, so this really is just looking at what are the, dif the different books that you might come across and why might they be the book for you? So I'm going to start with the first book on forest gardening. Now it's important to say that the forest garden is modelled originally on the tropical food forest where a lot of food is grown below the canopy of the forest because there's a lot of light in the tropics and you can grow things at ground level under trees. Now in Britain and similar latitudes, northern Europe and so on, uh, it's a rather different situation. It's a lot less light here. So it tends to be quite dark underneath forest canopy. And so really a forest garden shouldn't really be so much called a forest garden. Martin Crawford, who's one of the uh, most inspirational people doing forest gardening these days, he says really he would prefer the term woodland edge gardening because it's really looking at what grows on the woodland edge, uh, all the different levels and so on. Anyway, so the the first book was called Forest Gardening, and so essentially that that name has been kept. And it was written by Robert Hart, who was I was very lucky to go and stay with for a, a whole week in the last year of his life. And I remember looking at the visitor book and seeing how many people have visited his tiny little quarter acre forest garden, which always felt much bigger than a quarter acre when you were in it. And how many people have been inspired and of course um, the evidence of that is seen in the forest gardens that you find around these days but also the number of books that we have now with the words forest gardening in the title. So Robert really was talking about his journey, the creation of the forest garden but there wasn't a lot of technical detail. There were some plants in here and so on but he didn't have a lot of technical detail in here to help you create your own if you like. So so that's the first one. So Patrick Whitefield, um, who's who was a, a very inspirational permaculture teacher and had written a number of books, uh, very important books. So he spent time with Robert and essentially wrote the technical manual that Robert never got to write. So um, this book was quite fun trying to hold up a book and show it. <laughs> you can see it's uh, got quite a lot of, there's some nice photo, photos in here um, of, well, Robert's Forest Garden. <laughs> quite a lot of Robert's Forest Garden in here. Things about the different layers of the forest garden, the things that you might be planting and so on. Uh, there's also a bit at the beginning about how you might lay out the garden, different patterns in the garden. There we are, if you can never find the things and the, the kind of basics of what permaculture, what forest gardens are and how they work and so on. Just never find the diagram you need. Anyway, so um, that's the technical manual, the first technical manual really on forest gardening. Very good book. Um, around that time also um, a couple called Addy and uh, Ken Fern were experimenting with growing many different plants that might be well suited to the forest garden. And they wrote this book, Plants for a Future, and set up a charity also with the same name. And uh, they've also created over the years, many years now, a large database of plants uh, that you can access at Plants for a Future. I think it's pfaf.org on the internet. 
uh, with over 8,000 different species now that they've documented, uh, lots of details about how to grow them, cultivate them, what kind of conditions they like, what they produce and so on. And this book really is the, it's kind of the highlights or the main, the main attractions if you like. Uh, it's got some nice colour photographs in here. Uh, I remember when I got this book I was incredibly inspired to go out and get the seeds of many of these things and grow them. Um, some more successfully than others but again really excellent book um, plants for a future and then across the pond in the states um, these two books came out so <laughs> see now we've changed scale entirely so um, these two books edible forest gardens uh, gardens volumes one and two uh, different thicknesses, same price. The reason is that this has got colour in it and this is just black and white. Um, but both excellent books on different aspects. So um, volume one is vision and th uh, theory and volume two design and practice. Just to give you a sense of what's going on inside the books. Um, so again Very lovely books, lots of information, lots of research, lots of case studies. So this is um, a case study of Robert's garden, Robert Hart's garden, uh, Winlock Edge, and the things that were good about it and the things that didn't work so well. And that's one of the key things about this book is it's looking at what's, what are the successful strategies and what are the things that are not so good. What have we learned from doing these different things? But, uh, um, forest gardens are designed to be multifunctional, so uh, primarily perennial focused, although they might have some readily self-seeding annuals in the system, and um, that the outputs from the garden would include quite a lot of food, but not necessarily just food. So you have many plants in there to support other plants or to provide other things. And one of the nice things about the Plants for a Future book, this one here, is it has... Um, in the appendices, lists of, I can find it, <laughs> here we are, we've got plants for specific habitats there, um, plant toxins, native plants, mm -hmm. plant uses, there we are, right at the back, um, and it's got all kinds of things in here, gelatin substitutes, oil, um, egg substitutes, condiments, coffee substitutes, that might be uh, some people might debate whether is that really a substitute for coffee. <laughs> um, seed pods. Uh, there's fire retardants. Here we are, non-edible uses. There's lots of things in here, adhesives and um, beads and ink and insecticides and all kinds of things. So plants for many, many uses. So these two books, they're great. They'll set you back, certainly outside the US, quite a few pounds or euros. Um, and probably dollars. What do they say? They don't have the price on the back in dollars. Oh yes they do. $75. Still quite a lot of money. Um, but if you're thinking of doing forest gardening seriously um, then they're essential really because they're great books um, and the money you spend on the books you'll save anyway and the mistakes you don't make. The trees you don't kill by putting them in the wrong place. So kind of coming back and sitting somewhere in between the previous scales is uh, Martin Crawford's first kind of proper big book. He's written many um, what might be called kind of uh, directories of different plants around different categories, trees and shrubs and ground covers and nitrogen fixes and all kinds of things. Uh, lots of technical stuff. Uh, this was his first kind of pretty book, if you like. And so as you can see, my copy is fairly well taped together from many years of abuse um, and it's not that old a book but compared to the price of the other books you know this this is a book that has plenty in it it's uh, full color it's a very beautiful book it has lots of technical detail in it it's basically Martin's experience from uh, all the many 20 odd years of him doing forest gardening, what he's learnt, the things he's grown, the things that work, 
to some degree the plants that he's grown that are in the Plants for a Future book that uh, he agrees with rather than thinking they're a bit borderline and whether I would eat that or not. Um, and uh, so there's all the details of how to put it together and then long lists of species and the kind of conditions they need and what they produce and how you need to look after them uh, and so on and so forth. So an excellent book, certainly in terms of um, value for money. I think this is about £30, um, which for the size of the book and what you get is really a bargain. Um, and I think if you were thinking of starting with a forest garden to do it properly, that's where I would recommend starting that one. And then there's um, a few books here that kind of sit to the side of the other books. There's Food from Your Forest Garden. This was um, Martin and a friend of mine, Caroline Aitken, who uh, is another permaculture teacher. And Martin, she, they live quite close together. So Martin gave her, she kept giving her produce from the garden and she went about seeing what they could do with it. So it's really a, a collection of recipes around how to use the different things that come from the forest garden because uh, whilst forest gardens should include a lot of things that we like to eat like apples and pears and um, soft fruits and so on there's also a lot of things that we can grow in a forest garden which are less familiar and it's good to know how to use them so this is a, a book of plants and recipes if you like um, and again really Nice, lovely book, highly recommended. Food from your forest garden. Um, this is the one that I'm obsessed by at the moment, the forest garden greenhouse, because living in cool temperate Britain, um, I'm very excited by what could be grown more inside a greenhouse environment in terms of things that we can't normally grow here, what's on the edge of. And wherever you are, there's always, it's likely that there are things you can't grow either because it's too hot or it's too cold. Um, and so uh, Jerome, who wrote this book, The Forest Garden Greenhouse, lives at quite high altitude in Colorado and they grow bananas and papayas and things in the greenhouse environment because they create a very, what they call a climate battery, which is a way of storing the heat from the warm time of the year and during the day into the soil uh, which involves quite a bit of construction to put it all together. Some pictures of that going on in the book. He case studies all of the different greenhouses they get, they have, and how they're designed to do to create different um, environmental conditions, if you like, tropical or Mediterranean, whatever. This is the basic idea: is that uh, a fan brings the heat from the top of the greenhouse down into a collection of pipes which are buried in the ground. There we are. There's quite a lot of work to do to begin with. Um, you can see quite a lot of pipes. But once you've got that in place, then essentially you create the conditions to grow lots of interesting things in a greenhouse situation. Obviously, not really something that works uh, in a little greenhouse, but they say anything from 10 metres by three and a half, four metres upwards um, you should be good. And all being well, we have one of those very soon. Uh, a couple more books. One is Forest Gardening in Practice. This is by Thomas Remiatz, who again is another permaculturist in the UK network. Um, and he's gone around basically looking at existing forest gardens, studying how they work. Um, so some of them are private, some of them are community. What are the things that work about forest gardens? Um, so, da -da -da. it is very difficult to show a book of this size uh, to the camera and do the uh, logistics of holding it and so on. But, um, so essentially it's his research journey, if you like, of going around all these different projects, what they've learned, uh, what's good, what's not so good how to do forest gardening even better than we have up to now. Um, very recent book, very, very, again, very useful, um, particularly if you're th thinking about creating a forest garden, uh, what might go wrong is also in what can you do well. So the last book is quite thin, as you can see, <laughs> um, but literally arrived yesterday. 
and it's um, a little booklet on forest gardening, uh, a beginner's guide by Graham Burnett. Now Graham is um, the author of a number of different smallish booklets and also a rather chunky book called The Vegan Book of Permaculture, which is here somewhere. Here it is. And uh, probably best known for writing Permaculture, a beginner's guide, which has now gone to a colour version. This is also a colour booklet, um, full colour throughout. It's full of um, Graham's great lovely diagrams, <coughs> lovely colour diagrams. I think it's quite fitting that Graham should write a beginner's guide to to forest gardening because as you can see none of these are beginners guides <laughs> they're all rather big books it's very tempting to write a lot about forest gardening um, but very fitting because often if you go on to the internet and you type in forest gardening you'll get pictures and you'll often see this diagram essentially which Graham drew many years ago um, in for that particular beginners guide so it's nice to see him actually pre creating uh, Beginner's Guide to Forest Gardening. And yes, it's quite small. It's got 20, about 30 pages. Um, but he does, he makes really good use of the space. So he starts with a very kind of succinct um, description of what forest gardening is, um, how it's important for the environment and so on. See, I've lost a page already. Different functions, education, health and well-being, and so on. A little bit of a history is a picture of Robert Hart there. Um, and then you start getting into the realm of um, how do I go about doing it for myself? So what do you want? I mean, a forest garden is a structure, really. And what you put into that structure is really down to what your needs are. And so he just kind of asks the key questions of what do you want? What have you got? <coughs> What's your current situation? What scale can you work at? Because we can even create a forest garden in a very small garden, very small space, with just you know a single tree and collection of things around, and then he um, provides a nice little pattern about how you might create it over time. Um, it's got things about resources and stock, designing the ground layer, a little mapping plan there. That's the so on and so forth. Um, about bees and then he gets into some recommended plants and particularly my, one of my favorite plants is uh, Japanese wineberry fantastic fruit it grows very well in the forest garden um, and so it's quite succinct but I think a, a really excellent book booklet to buy for someone as a gift or just as a starter it's really about inspiring giving kind of the essence of what forest gardening is about and where to start, what are the key things to, to know about. So my table is done. There's a lot of books there. Um, hopefully there's one there that is perfect for you or for you to give to somebody as a gift. And I wish you a lot of fun dreaming up what you're going to plant. <laughs>